chapter six, problem number 69. Here there, we're told that there's a 65 kilogram skier gripping a moving rope that is powered by an engine and is pulled at a constant speed to the top of a hill with, that makes an angle of 23 degrees with respect to level ground. The skier is pulled a distance of 320 meters along the incline and it takes two minutes to reach the top of the hill. There's also friction in this problem. The coefficient of kinetic friction is um, 0 0.1. That's between the, the coefficient that describes the friction between the skis and the snow. What we're tasked with is figuring out what horsepower engine is required if 30 skiers are on the rope at one time. As usual, let's start with a picture and try to break this down. because There's a number of moving parts. Here is our very smooth hill that makes an angle. Theta, I'll go ahead and put in the number. Theta is 23 degrees. There's a skier. He's in rectangular shape with a mass. And what's going to happen is the skier is going to go up the hill a distance. Uh, if you like a displacement, let's call this delta x. That's 320 meters. And he or she is being pulled by a rope connected to an engine. This engine is doing, doing work. Uh, requiring power, and we want to we want to ask a question about the power. Okay, all the while there's some friction, uh, pulling, uh, you know, causing uh, this to be harder than it would be in the absence of friction. And let's see, what we need to do is think we're going to have forces. So it's probably not a bad idea to think about what the free body diagram looks like. The mass of skier is here. We know there's a force of gravity pulling down, Fg. Now the hill goes in this direction. And of course, there's a parallel component of gravity. Let's put this here. Okay, this is FP. The skier is going that way. So friction we know is pointing in the opposite direction. Let me kind of sketch that over here with some different magnitude. Call this the force of friction. It's kinetic friction, in other words, sliding friction. And then there's the force provided uh, you could say it's provided by the rope, or ultimately it's really provided by the engine. So let's call this Fe. So there are three forces to worry about in this direction, which we can call this the x direction, and this could be the y direction, if you like. Okay, so what we want is power, ultimately. We want power and horsepower, so when we get watts, we'll have to convert that later on. Conceptually, concepts. Well, we have forces, so probably we'll need Newton's second law. Uh, we have friction to deal with, so we'll have to remember the rules for friction or the equations for friction. Uh, where we want power, and power almost always involves work, so I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Let's see what equations we might need. The power required is given by how much work is done divided by how much time it takes. The work done involves whatever the force relevant force is, the displacement and the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. What else do we have? We should keep in mind that the parallel component of gravity is mg sine theta. And the force of friction, the kinetic friction, is the coefficient of friction times the normal force. The normal force involves mg cosine theta. So why don't I go ahead and write that here? This is mu k times mg cosine theta. We're almost there. I guess I'll, I'll write down Newton's second law, which you must have memorized by now. But anyway, here it is. Okay. And we have some knowns. We have the mass. I'll put this here. The mass is 65 kilograms. The displacement distance 320 meters. The, the angle is 23 degrees. The amount of time is two minutes. Uh, we'll write this as 120 seconds because to get watts, we'll need to have kilograms, meters, and seconds, etc. So why don't we do the following? The ultimate answer we're trying to get is the power required to get 30 people up the ramp. Okay. So uh, let's just put this off to the side. The power that we want is going to be the number 30 times the power for one person. So I'll just call that P1, the power required to get one person up this ramp that distance in that amount of time. Okay. Um, first of all, to get power, we're going to need work. To get work, we need to know how much force is required. If you start from the free body diagram and think about what Newton's law says, because it's going up the ramp at constant speed, it's not accelerating. 
If it's not accelerating, that means the net force is zero. So if we think about this being the x direction, Newton's second law, let's again keep this off to the side. Newton's second law tells us that the force going up, the force provided by the engine, uh, minus the force of friction, minus the force of gravity, the parallel component, those are equal to zero. What we want really is the force provided by the engine because we're going to try to get the work and power provided by the engine. Okay, that just means that the work provided by the engine is equal to these things added together. In other words, let's write it like this, mu k mg cosine theta, that's this term on the other side, plus mg sine theta, that's this term on the other side. Okay, so that's the force that we want. We want to get the work provided by the engine. And leaving everything in variables now as well. Um, let's just go ahead and clean this up a bit. We'll write the work over here, mg, pulling that out, mu k cosine of theta plus sine of theta. The displacement, I'll just write delta x, that's this number, I'll put it in in a second, delta x. And the cosine of the angle, this is the angle between the force provided by the engine and the displacement, which are going in the same direction, so we have cosine of zero, in other words, one. I'll just write that here, cosine of, cosine of zero degrees, which is just one. Okay, so we've got the work, we're getting very close. If we divide that work by the time uh, elapsed, which is the 120 seconds, we know the power required to get one person, that's what this is, the one person going up the ramp is therefore this mg mu k cosine theta plus sine theta, the delta x, and then we'll divide by the delta t. And this is another way to see how you can end up getting the power by a force times a velocity, because this delta x over delta t, that's really the velocity or the speed of the go person going up the, up the ramp. Finally, to get the answer that we want, it's going to be this quantity times 30. So when we put that all together, I'll write in the numbers just so you can see where everything came from. The 30 people times the mg, which is the 65 kilograms, times the g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. The mu k is 0 0.1, the cosine of the angle 23 degrees, cosine 23 degrees, plus the sine of 23 degrees. I'm leading off the screen, but multiply that by 320 meters. I'll put that over here. Times 320 meters divided by 120 seconds. Holy crap. If you put everything together, you'll find that this is approximately 24,600, I believe. 24,600 watts. So if you got that at some point, good, you did it correctly, don't worry. But the last thing to do is uh, the book asks us to convert this to horsepower. So let's just make a little tiny box over here to wrap this up and switch colors because we need some variety here. 24, oh, look at that, that's nice, 600 watts. The conversion factor, feel free to Google this if I didn't already give it to you. Um, 1.34 times 10 to the minus three. Horsepower for every one watt. So when you put this together, this is approximately 33 horsepower. And for me, when I stop and think about, does that make sense? Does 33 horses pulling 30 people up a hill in two minutes make sense? Uh, I guess so. So there you go.